Hi, it's Saturday, uh, May 21st, 2016. Uh, I'm going to be talking today about debt, uh, mainly because I think that the next big change in the world, in the Western world, developed world especially, is going to be a revulsion to debt. And by, re by that I mean people won't want to know anymore about debt. They're going to be like, it's going to be a four-letter word, debt. And one of the reasons why I think that's going to happen is um, of stories I've heard and read about, uh, you know, during the Great Depression, the 1930s, and, you know, during the, just before the war as well, and, you know, late 30s, early 40s, uh, I remember my father always told me stories about, because he, he was born in 1932, he told me stories about how, you know, things weren't easy back in the 30s when he was growing up. He, he said his mother used to, like, make clothes for the kids from old clothes from his dad, you know. So there was no, people didn't go out and take uh, credit card debt. There were no credit cards. And they just, you know... The philosophy was, if you don't have the money, you can't have it. You know, there was no, you know, let's buy it now and pay tomorrow. And uh, I think that came as a result of the, you know, Great Depression that was triggered by the stock market crash in 29. And then also the, all the uh, European bank failures in the early 30s. That came as a result of that. You know, the 1920s are always known as the Roaring Twenties, you know, and I'm sure, you know, there's a lot of uh, enthusiasm, you know, like, uh, and people were getting into that back then. And then the 1930s was a complete revulsion to that, and it became a four-letter word. And in terms of nowadays, you know, here in the UK and the US and other European countries, you know, there's so much debt, you know, like, for example, when you listen to adverts about buying a car, they don't talk about the price of the car, how much it's going to cost. They talk about uh, the fact that it's 0% financing for the next, you know, 5, 10 years. And they talk that you only have to pay 300 pounds a month. Uh, yeah, it's all based on finance. Uh, and credit cards as well, you know, I thought that back in 08 and everything had collapsed, that people would finally, you know, there would finally be a revulsion to that. But I guess the powers that be uh, did not allow that. They wanted that last uh, hurrah for debt. And I think that's what we've had, you know, since 2008, 2009. And they're making it an even bigger uh, bubble than we had before. And in my opinion, we are in, on the cusp uh, of mentality of the public changing. And, and now I'll go back a little bit. I remember I grew up, you know, in the 70s and early 80s. And back then, there was a lot of inflation, especially in Brazil. But also, you know, you, you're reading about double-digit inflation in the U.S. and Europe, which was unheard of, you know, and uh, people couldn't think, you know, how is this going to be solved? They, they couldn't see uh, what we got in the uh, 80s and 90s and up till now. They couldn't see disinflation, which may, means you still have inflation, but the rate of inflation goes down. They couldn't see that, but I think the trigger for the change from a mentality of inflation to a mentality of stable prices, the trigger was uh, Paul Volcker of the Fed allowing uh, rates to go to the their natural market rate because he didn't lift rates to 20%. He just allowed the market to do it, and it went to 20%. Uh, 1980-81 uh, and from there I think that was the trigger that you know we couldn't see it couldn't see it back then but you know four or five years later you know you you could tell you know prices were 
not galloping anymore. And I think that's what triggered it. Now, I think we're on the cusp, as I said, of mentality changing. And I think it's going to be a mentality that will hate that. People will be more careful. They will only spend money that they have uh, because it's not sustainable anymore. And I think the, the trigger is going to be because you have to look at debt as the liability part of, you know, uh, the market and assets, uh, you know, and, and like stocks, uh, bonds, commodities, everything else is the reflection of that debt. And right now, especially the stock market and the bond market, they're all like in bubble territory. And I think that when that turns and we have a crash in the stock market, a collapse in the stock market, um, I, it's tough to, to, to know what's going to happen to treasuries. Uh, government bonds, but they should crash as well because if you look at interest rates, um, you know, U.S. Treasury interest rates, uh, they've been going down since 1981. So it's a 35-year bull market. And I'm sorry to those people who think it's going to be like Japan and we're going to have zero rates, negative rates. I think that this is going to be, you know, I've been talking even about the curve flattening, you know, and longer term yields coming down, but it could flatten, but maybe with higher yields. So yeah, that's, that's my, uh, what I've got on my mind today. I think there will be a huge revulsion to that. Uh, the trigger will be a collapse of uh, the stock market, a collapse of housing, because, you know, a lot of people, you know, think, oh, my house has gone up to a million pounds, you know, uh, but they don't look at the fact that they've got a, quite a big mortgage. And even if they don't have a mortgage, a lot of people who have other houses, they, they've got huge mortgages here in the UK and I'm sure in other countries. And when that housing market collapses, the credit market collapses, uh, you know, the bank's balance sheets, their assets are these mortgages. You know, their liability to the uh, homeowner but to the banks, they're the assets. And it's all going to be like a total uh, meltdown, in my opinion. Uh, the, the problem is that people who own houses, they're still going to be stuck with that, you know, £100,000 or $100,000 mortgage. But they won't be able to pay it off. Uh, you know, the economy be, will be, you know, in quagmire in my opinion and they're probably going to walk out the house I, I don't know what's going to happen but I think it's going to be a generation generational change and for the next 30 35 years uh, that is going to be a four letter word and uh, but it doesn't happen overnight I think it's been happening uh, already um, but the majority of the public are still able to carry the debt at the moment and they have a nice lifestyle, but I think there will be a trigger. I don't know when it's going to happen. You know, there's a lot of people predicting imminent uh, meltdowns, crashes and stuff, and they could be right. And I've talked about it. So yeah, revulsion to debt. That's going to, you know, that's going to be the next four letter word. I guess that's going to be a revolutionary change uh, for our generation, but it's nothing different, you know, from if you look back far enough, you know, in the 1930s, there was revulsion to that. And um, yeah, the, so as, as the French say, um, you know, le plus ça, ça change, le plus ça devient la même chose. So the more things change, the more they became, become the same. Uh, and yeah, human nature never changes. Uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on things. Um, yeah, this week, the major event, in my opinion, I guess, was not event in terms of the market, 
was the Fed kind of uh, pouring some, a bit of cold water uh, on the enthusiasm uh, of uh, speculators and investors by saying that uh, they might raise rates on June 15th. We'll have to see about that. Uh, the stock market uh, technically doesn't look very good. As you can see by this chart, uh, we've got head and shoulder formation in the Dow and the objective. And we close below that neckline uh, this week. And the objective, short-term objective, would be just around 17,000. Uh, so it looks like we've made a top in the uh, stock market. Gold and silver did come off quite a bit. Uh, since the uh, FOMC minutes, we did close above 1250 for the week in gold. Uh, silver, unfortunately, is back below 17, but I think you know that can silver can move back up quite well. The mining shares have corrected, but they're still looking fairly robust, in my opinion. And um, yeah, so that's uh, that's it. Revulsion to that. That that's something to keep an eye on, and it's just gonna change people's mentality of, you know, towards debt. Because basically debt, as the Austrian School of Economics explains, is, you know, when you take on debt, you're basically spending uh, future production, you know, you spending something, you spending something that you haven't produced yet. And I think we've done too much of that for the last 35, 30, 35 years. Uh, and uh, I think that's about to change. Uh, yeah, so if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do. And uh, share it with friends, this video, if you, if you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll try to keep coming up with more <laughs> things to talk about. Sometimes we get stuck. We, got, we have what I guess you could call vlog, vloggers block. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. This take care. Have a good weekend. Bye.